There's been one or two occasions where uh, a cop has actually stopped us just as we were about to enter a building. A couple cops stop us, ask us what we're doing, and, you know, honesty is the best policy. You know, we just told them, hey, you know, we just wanted to take some pictures. We're, you know, really interested in this place. You know, the cops said, hey, it's a bad neighborhood. It's a dangerous building, so be careful. And they drove off and let, left us to explore. Jeffrey Stroop. Uh, I live in Cleveland and for the last 10 years I've been spending my free time exploring abandoned buildings, climbing bridges, and basically going anywhere that I probably shouldn't go. Probably when I was around 11 or 12 years old, uh, I remember my dad taking me to the uh, Dayton Air Force Museum. The whole time, you know, he was taking photos with you know, some cheap 35 millimeter point and shoot. And, uh, and I love the sound that the shutter made. Ever since then, I'd said, you know, I'm gonna be a photographer. For me, like photography and urban exploration kind of went hand in hand. They both, you know, uh, the photography pushed me to explore more abandoned buildings. The abandoned buildings pushed me to get better at photography. And, um, you know, I eventually made a career out of it. Between abandoned buildings, uh, bridges, you know, tunnels and other like subterranean places. I've been in just over 200. Um, pretty much anywhere that I go, uh, I'm, I'm gonna do everything I can to find something. I think my two main uh, sources of motivation and inspiration are the connection that I feel to the past and to the history. Also, just the sense of discovery that I get when I go into a place and uh, you know, I look into these empty rooms for the first time. Even as a kid, uh, I explored like the drain tunnels uh, that were, you know, at the park uh, by my house. You know, little culverts that ran under the street. About 10 years ago, uh, I started actually going into some of the abandoned buildings that I would find. As I got more interested in looking for those places, I started to find things online about urban exploration. Urban exploration has always been around in one form or another. The very first building that was ever vacant, you know, I'm sure at some point, you know, somebody else walked by it and stepped inside to see what was in there. The early urban explorers kind of adopted the same saying that the national parks use, which is um, something along the lines of, you know, uh, take only photos leave only footprints, you know, we're not here to break in, we're not here to damage or vandalize anything, we're not here to, you know, steal things. Um, you know, we're really just here to document um, and explore and just experience something that, you know, the rest of the world has forgotten and thrown aside. The hobby is definitely getting more and more popular, but there's definitely a lot of danger involved. With more and more people doing this, there's also more and more people that are doing it without the same level of respect. You know, people that, you know, just want to come into these buildings and break windows and, you know, smash stuff. My hope is that they can go in and look at these places with the respect that they deserve. There's definitely buildings uh, will pass up the building just because, you know, the neighborhood just seems too, too violent, but I find that, you know, if you, if you show the neighborhood and the people that live there the respect that they deserve, um, then they're usually pretty respectful of you. You know, if we know we're going to be in a bad neighborhood, like a really bad neighborhood, we still try to get out early enough that, you know, crime isn't awake yet. You know, my first few buildings, uh, I, I will admit, I was, I was pretty scared. It's a setting that you, you really only see in horror movies and nightmares. Healing paint and the decay and, uh, you know, the darkness. Now it's just become so natural for me that, you know, this is all I dream about. You know, at night, the dreams that I remember when I wake up in the morning, you know, are dreams of exploring abandoned buildings. I guess there's a little bit of, of nervousness, um, but at this point, uh, 
that nervousness manifests itself more as excitement uh, and adrenaline. Easily one of the one of the most terrifying situations I've ever been in was exploring this this school and from floor to ceiling is just stacks of chairs and desks. Uh, and so there's just this narrow little corridor that you kind of have to work your way through like a, like a maze. You turn the corner, all you see in your flashlight beam is this floating black mass. Somebody had hung a graduation gown from the middle of this room in between two boilers. I laugh at it now because it, it freaked us out so bad. You never, you never really know what you're gonna find. I've come across old documents that, you know, being the history buff that I am, I think is absolutely fascinating. I opened a closet in an abandoned insane asylum and it was just stacked knee high with like VHS tapes. It was the video footage from all of the surveillance cameras in the building. It's just five frames of this video, five frames of you know, this video camera, five frames from this video camera. And so it's this strobe light effect of black and white images of these people in this insane asylum. You know, and I was always looking for places to post my photos because I'm proud of my adventures. I'm proud of, you know, uh, the things that I've done. And so with the blog, I wanted to be able to give more of a backstory. I wanted to be able to uh, share a series of photos and give, you know, context to them. I only share my photos just because, you know, I hope that some other people find them as interesting as I do. With a lot of the stuff that gets posted online, you know, I just avoid reading the comments altogether. I don't do this, you know, so that somebody else can, you know, rip on it and hate on it. You know, I just do this for me, you know, and I would be doing this even if the internet didn't exist. I'm happy that, you know, there's other people out there that are interested enough to, you know, want to look at my photos and, and you know, you know, I'm flattered by it. Exploring these places and taking photos of them is just something that I'm driven to do. I have to see these places. I have to get photos of them before they're gone. You know, the history is too important to me. It's just something that I'll always do. You can squeeze right through, and the best part is... The f There's not even a fence down there. <laughs> You guys look official. Is it all right that we do an interview right here? Not for me, you're just engineers. All right. <laughs> See, I, I just arrived here every year to cross the squad or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. Does that happen a lot? Uh, I mean, I do run into, like, people. Yeah. Often, but not usually, like, city engineers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a first for me. Most of the time you just kind of run into like random people, like, <laughs> I've got all sorts of crazy stories about running into random people.